The other day I was putting together a new lead generation campaign in Facebook for one of my clients, and I noticed that the form builder process was a little bit different. Now, there are three different form types. Originally, there used to be two. There was more volume and higher intent, and they would allow you to have people either fly through the form submission process or have them go to a review screen before submitting. But now there's a custom option where you can tell your brand stories in a really customized way. So what I want to do is run through the three different form types of lead generation ads on Facebook so you can start making the most of them in your account. The easiest way to talk through all of these lead gen form types is just to hop into the builder and start to walk you through what each one of them does and show you the differences. So I've already created a placeholder new lead generation campaign and a new lead generation ad. And I'm gonna skip all of the different ad setup pieces aside from the form. So let's scroll all the way down here and get to the new form section. You can see our account only has one sample form from the past. So now I'm gonna create a new form. And aside from the form name, the very first thing that you have to choose is going to be the form type. And as you'll see, as we go through the rest of the examples here, that's because each of these three different options will impact the later sections of the form setup. So you choose this first so that you can then go through the setup process and finish your form without things changing. The first option is going to be more volume. You can see here, you use a form that's quick to fill out and submit on a mobile device. This is effectively the original version of a lead generation form. So just really quick as we go through this, you can see that there is an intro section where you can choose the background image first. You can use either the one from your ad or upload a custom image. And then you can add in a greeting, which has a headline and a description. Just for sake of example, I'm gonna put this in here and I'm probably gonna skip it for the future sections, but just so you can see things as we're going through it. You can see I've added in a headline and then the description can be either a paragraph or a list. Just for fun, let's make it a list. And now you can see we have a number of different line items that we can add up to 80 characters. And now you can see what it will look like with a little bit of a description in here. As we go through each of these demos, there's going to be a preview over here to the right that you can keep an eye on the different changes that we're making. Next, for more volume, we're just gonna keep scrolling down over here. You can see the questions that people get to fill out. You can use custom questions, whether they are multiple choice, short answer, conditional, or appointment request. And then you have the pre-fill questions, which are going to have a number of different options from contact information, user, demographic, work, your national ID number that will effectively pre-populate based on your Facebook information. So all of these questions are gonna be the same. And then in a more volume lead generation ad, you'll see over here, the user would just click next after answering these questions. They would then find their way to the privacy policy and they would click submit. And then you get to utilize the message for the leads or effectively the thank you page of your lead generation form. And you can customize all of these pieces at the end. Now, most of the things that I covered, whether it's the intro section, the questions, that sort of thing, are all going to be the same for all of the different form types. The same is going to be true for this message for leads. You'll have an area where you can put in a headline, a description, call to action button, the link for that call to action button, and then the call to action text. But now let's jump into the second type of lead generation form, and that's gonna be higher intent. So if I come all the way back up to the top, we're gonna to click higher intent, and you'll see that the review screen option popped up down here. The intro is gonna remain the same. You still have all the different tools here. Questions will also be the same, as well as the privacy policy. But when somebody is on this page, you'll notice that the change here is that they have to slide to submit. So they have to take the time to actually click this blue arrow with their finger and drag it all the way across on their phone. And then they'll be sent to a review screen. This review screen gives people a chance to look over their information before they submit it. And it will look something like this. Review your info, still have your image, but then it's got all of the different fields that we asked for, which were literally just email, full name. And then again, they have to slide to submit to get all the way to the message for leads thank you page. So the changes here between the more volume and higher intent lead gen form types are that a higher intent form has a review screen that's included and all the different calls to action are going to be slide to submit rather than just click the button to submit. Those are the biggest differences between the two. And for a long time, those were the only options that we had. But now we have a third option type. If I come back up to form type, and this third option, based on all the things you can do, is probably aptly named custom, even if it doesn't really tell you much about what's going on. So let's start to get into it. Let's click custom. You'll see the review screen went away. 
so it does have just the same number of steps as more volume, but there's a lot of other things that happened. So in the intro section, all of my information was taken away because this section looks different now. There's not an option to add the image from your ad. And the other thing is that when you go to actually add this image, which I'm going to in a second, it does not take you to your account library. It takes you to your computer file navigator. So whenever you're putting one of these custom forms together, make sure that you know where your image files live because you're not going to navigate to your Facebook creative library. So I'm gonna upload an image real quick. Just kidding. I'm not gonna upload an image because I don't have one and it's taking too long for me to find one just to show you an example. Needless to say, just upload an image that's 1080 by 1080 and it'll show up over here. Now, moving on. The next piece is you can add in a headline. You'll see you have up to 38 characters here. This isn't necessarily the best use of a headline since the business name is already showing up there, but I just want you to be able to see where it gets populated. And then you'll see as we scroll down, the overview section looks a little bit different. We do not have the option to do a list. You can only add in a description paragraph that has about 81 characters. So there's not a lot that you can write here. Again, that's not a ton of characters and I use 77 out of the 81. Next, you can add in benefits, which are optional but effectively you get the option to have the list section as well as the paragraph that we had for the other form types. So here we only get 57 characters for each of these different benefits, but I'm just gonna add in a little bit of quick information here. And as I'm updating each of these fields, you can see them updating in the preview over here. So I'm gonna scroll down a little bit because now we're gonna start getting into the extreme customization portions of this lead generation form type. So after we've done the overview and the benefits, now we get to go down to this section called build your story. And there are four different pieces here. We have a how it works, products, social proof, and incentives. So let's go through each of these relatively quickly and show you what all they can do. You'll notice when we start off, all of them are toggled to the left, so they are turned off, but you can add in any combination of these sections that you want to. So let's go through the first for how it works. And as we're doing this, how it works, I'll show you how this section operates specifically compared to the other types, but also you'll be able to see how these customization portions work. Each one of them is going to have a section header. Some are customizable, some are not, but for this how it works section, you can either stick with the language of how it works, or you can use get started, more about us, how we're different, or highlights. Depending on which one you choose, the section will change a little bit, but let's stick with this how it works to start. Here we can put in actual steps and you can see that we can add two to five steps. And each of these steps is going to include a title that has 23 characters and a description with 54. You can customize it to whatever you want. And then once you've customized the first step, you just open up the second. And then if you wanna add in your third step, all you have to do is click the box and now you have step three. But each time you add in a new step, it's important to note that you need to add in the title and the description. If you don't add a description, it will literally say description. Okay, that's the first option. If you wanna get rid of a step, remember you can have anywhere from two to five. You just open the third step and click remove, and now it's gone. So let's scroll back up a little bit and change the section header from how it works to how we're different. Now you'll see that the language over here changed, but all the different steps are gonna be the same, but you don't have to count these as actual steps anymore. You could just count these almost like a benefit statement to say the first reason why we're different is X, Y, and Z. The second reason why we're different is A, B, and C. The same is true for any of the other options, but all of these are gonna follow the same step format in this how it works option. So now let's move to the second section, which is going to be products. We'll toggle this on. And now you'll see over here in the preview that we have the regular header image, we have the headline, the overview section has been truncated, and now the get started section, which was originally how it works, is now also truncated. And now we're looking at just the product section down below, which is going to operate as a carousel more so than a list of steps. So let's scroll down here. Just like with the first section, we do have different header options. We can use either services, bestsellers, plans, courses, or programs. And each one of these is gonna do the same thing that the how it works section did. All of the options are gonna be the same, except the header is going to change, but all the functionality will stay about the same. Just like with any other carousel creative on Facebook, you can then add in your image. You can add your title, which can be 20 characters, a description, which again, you will see is not optional. So definitely make sure you fill that out. But then below each of those descriptions, you can also add in additional benefits that have 23 characters a piece. It says they're optional, 
but you need to add anywhere from two to three benefits. So if you want to take advantage of these, make sure you have at least two to call out because you can't call out only one. And then again, you can add anywhere from two to five carousel cards within this products or services section. Pretty simple. The next option down below is going to be the social proof area. So let's toggle this on, scroll up a little bit. Again, we have a section header that's going to be reviews, but you can have accredited by, certified by, in the news. And I'm gonna leave it on this one for a little bit because the language changes on this one, which is different from the others so far. This again will operate like a carousel. So you can add anywhere from two to five cards. You're gonna need an image, and then you're supposed to put in the reviewer's name and what they say. So enter the direct quote. You'll see that the reviewer's name is a little bit shorter. Ideally, you're probably just putting a first name on here, maybe a last name initial, and you only get 14 characters. But for the quote itself, you get up to 100 characters. So that's gonna take up the description section and the benefit lines that were comparable in the product section. So you're taking that entire area for the review. Similarly, you can add a second all the way up to a fifth card just by adding them. But if you wanna move away from reviews and maybe you wanna try and test out the accredited by language, you'll see that it's accredited by, but then the prompts down here are also different. You still have the image, but the language is who are you accredited by? You're then supposed to put in the name and then you have the accreditation details. So it still operates as name, further description of the review, but in this area, it's accredited by. If you were to utilize certified by, it would follow that type of language. And then if you wanted to use in the news, it would prompt you to put in the media outlet and then what they say. Still going to be 14 and 100 characters. The last section is going to be incentives. And here we only have the option to do one. There's not gonna be a carousel and there's no customization on the headers. All we need to do here is put in the incentive name. So for this one, you'd want a free one hour consultation, but this could be anything. You could add in a certain promotional code. You could say that you have a discount on your items. You could get a free sample of something. Whatever makes sense for your incentives, you have 21 characters for that. You can add in a bit of a description, whether you're explaining what the incentive is, or if you're using it like they're showing here, telling when that offer expires, and you have 24 characters for that. And then the disclaimer section is going to be any sort of not valid with other promotions, only valid in the United States, something along those lines, any disclaimers that you need to have there. But you can also see that this section is going to look a bit different in the preview. So while we have the get started products and the news piece here, this incentive section is just going to be a gray area with this little logo thingy on it that just talks about the incentive, description, and disclaimer. And the text is going to be in descending font size and getting smaller and smaller all the way to that disclaimer. So clearly there are a lot of ways that you can customize this custom lead generation form type on Facebook. And then lastly, I just wanna talk about the other pieces here. You can still utilize all of the same questions, whether they are pre-fill questions or the custom questions, which for some reason it kind of hid them. You can still use all of those different options. And then you have the privacy policy. And then you can see here that it says slide to submit, but the button does not look like a slide. In all of the other examples I've done of this, it has shown that it is just a submit button. There is no slide. This could mean that Facebook is still testing these out, trying to figure out which one works best. But in my experience, the custom form type is effectively a hybrid of the more volume in that it does not have the review step and it has the click to submit, but it does follow some of the higher intent pieces in that it gives you a lot of room to utilize more information in your lead generation form to qualify users before they fill out the form. In my personal opinion, it would be very difficult to go through all of these different intro pieces and ignore the fact that this business is just not something that I want. That's a lot of information telling them about what my offers are, who I'm accredited by, what my services are, what my business is about, for me to just ignore that all of that doesn't make sense for me and still submit the form. So overall, lead generation forms on Facebook are only getting more powerful you can still use the original option of more volume if you're just trying to get as many people as possible through that form and if all of your lead quality looks good. But if you're having a little bit of a hard time filtering out users, you can start to use the higher intent section and give people a chance to review their information before they submit. Or you can go all the way to this custom form, take advantage of these new sections and really tell your brand story in your lead generation form, treating it almost like a landing page before somebody fills out that form. 
Hopefully you're as excited to start testing out these new custom form types as I am in your client accounts or in your own accounts. And if you have any questions or any cool suggestions for how to use them, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.